Hi. I'm Anushrut. I'm the product lead for PromQL. Uh, I don't work at Amazon. Uh, how many of you have been building AI assistants or AI agents? Uh, have you have built one AI assistant or agent in the past one year? A bunch of you. That's awesome. Uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, terms like retrieval augmented generation rag or uh, tool calling, function calling? Everyone. Awesome. So, AI assistants on data do not work. It's my claim. Let's try one, right? This is uh, Rufus on Amazon.com. Um, how much did I spend on electronics in 2022? Does not work. Gemini on Google Drive. This is my personal drive. This is a family finance file which my brother and I share. Uh, my brother's name is Abhinav, so I'm going to ask a question. Um, I know he did. Could not find any relevant files. Okay. One last example. Einstein on Salesforce. This is our own Salesforce data at Hasura. We asked it a question, what's the average length of our uh, sales cycle this quarter? Uh, it says I can't answer that question. So I try again, and it says, okay, 2.21 days. No enterprise sales cycle is ever 2.21 days. <laughs> okay, so I asked it, can you explain how you got this number? And it says, I took the average of the uh, data in the stage one to stage four age length field. Makes sense, but we have seven stages, not four. Uh, even for an uh, opportunity to go from stage one to stage four, it takes way longer. It, it takes uh, longer for them to reply to the first email. So uh, AI assistants on real data just don't work. So let's actually look at an AI assistant which actually works on real data. Do you work? It works. <laughs> now, uh, let's start a new thread. So this assistant is a assistant we created for our customer support team. This is connected to our customer's data, connected to our product usage data, uh, product usage metrics, connected to our billing data, our finance data, and it's also connected to our ticketing system, which is Zendesk. Um, can I ask you to hold the mic? Of course. Thank you. So you can't time check me. Okay, uh, so if I ask a question like, who are my top five customers by revenue who have at least four projects with us, um, and their average revenue per project is more than, let's make it do some math, one, five, six, seven, eight, some random number. Okay, customer's data is coming from uh, Postgres. My internet does not work. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's start a new thread. Um, who are my top five customers by revenue who have at least uh, three projects with us and their average revenue per project is more than uh, 1,500, something like that. Okay. Uh, now, this data has to be fetched live. Thank you. Uh, uh, this data will be fetched live from uh, BigQuery. Uh, some part of the data is in Postgres, uh, and PromQL will try to co will come up with this query plan of how to answer that question. It'll, it'll look at your entire data landscape, and it'll see. Okay, uh, I'll first need to calculate the revenue for each customer, which I have to do by looking at the invoices because you don't have revenue anywhere in your data. So I'll collect all the uh, all the revenue uh, items from your revenue uh, table. Then I will group every uh, invoice per uh, customer. Then I will calculate the total revenue. I will uh, get the project details for each customer. I will apply that filter and give you the answer. And this is exactly what PromQL does. Uh, executes, implements this query plan, and executes that query plan, and comes up with an answer. This is great. Uh, but 
I also want to see what are the organization ID and what are their uh, customer ID. So all I have to do is edit the query plan and be like, uh, when you are fetching the customer details, include organization ID and customer ID. So now I can just start talking to my uh, data as flexibly as I want. I can edit the query plan as, flexi uh, as flexibly as I want. And I can be sure that PromQL will do this accurately, repeatably, and reliably. Right? It gave me the same answer, but included the customer ID and the uh, uh, organization ID. Now, I want to join this response with my data in Zendesk. Right? I want to do something like, uh, how many support tickets do each of these customers have? Now, this data is in Zendesk. Plus, I don't want you to forget any of the customers, any of the customer emails, names, things like those. How do I make sure that an LLM does not hallucinate, right? What we do is, uh, with PromQL, we do not load up all this data like a rack system into the LLM's context and expect the LLM to work. All of this is happening in a programmatic runtime. So the first step that it does is, it gets the top customers from the previous artifact. So this memory that you see on the side is not just for you to see, but also for the LLM to see on the fly. Uh, LLM's programmatic runtime to see on the fly. Best part of PromQL is if it messes up somewhere, if there's an execution error, it'll figure out what the issue is, like a human analyst, like, an, uh, like a human uh, engineer, and fix the error, re-implement its query plan, and uh, before you come. Uh, uh, one last thing is ability to take action. Uh, issue uh, $500 refund to uh, the third user's second highest revenue project. The ability to take actions, connect your APIs to your, uh, uh, API to your uh, chatbots and agents, right? Connect any kind of SaaS API, custom APIs, and expect it to work it's on the second try. <laughs> okay. While it's executing that, okay. Uh, best part about PromQL is it asks for the human's confirmation because you can't let your AI have free reign over your data or your APIs, right? So it says that I'm about to issue $500 to Marissa. Uh, this is the project ID, this is the owner ID. And I click on approve. It goes and hits the Stripe API. And, and, and issues the refund. Okay, uh, we have put together an in-depth benchmark uh, comparing Rack to PromQL. Uh, double the accuracy, almost edging to 100%. Uh, this is using the frames benchmark that uh, Google has. Uh, we have also done a very in-depth analysis comparing PromQL to Anthropic's latest model context protocol. Uh, again, major uh, difference in, uh, in accuracy. And uh, I would love for you to check out the PromQL design today and play with it yourself. Thank you.